All right, everyone. So today we are doing 6.5. And 6.5 entails graphing sine and cosine graphs. Um, we're actually going to be doing a project on this. Um, this graph basically looks like a wave, so just picture a wave. Um, so it's actually used in science. If surfers ever want to model waves, they'll look at that. Um, it's actually used in the Navy as well, which is pretty cool. Um, just to kind of like track like um, ocean patterns and things like that. Um, sine waves and cosine waves are also used with sound. Like that's what a sound wave looks like. It is a sine um, cosine derivative. So it's pretty cool. Um, so we're going to see what that looks like. Um, so we're actually going to start with sine. They're actually very similar, sine and cosine. Um, so just kind of giving you guys an idea of what the basic graph kind of looks like. Um, if we were just doing this in a regular class, um, this is actually a really good warm up, and I would have just had you guys either use your unit circle or use um, your calculator to calculate these. Um, as you guys can see for this first graph, both of these x values are equivalent. So zero degrees is zero radians, 30 degrees is pi over six radians, so one and so forth. So these radians should look familiar to you because they are on the unit circle. Um, and then we're going to actually be graphing in radians. That's so very typical for mathematicians. So that's why you see this in radians instead of in degrees. Um, we just put these side by side to kind of like continue familiarizing your guys' selves. So um, you can either keep this in degree mode or you can change it to radian mode if you want to um, enter in the radians as your x value. Um, or again, or you could use the unit circle. So to remind you, for example, if we wanted to take sine of 30 degrees or sine of pi over six, you guys go to the 30 degrees and sine is equal to the y value. So if we look at the y value, it's one half. Um, my calculator is currently in radians, so uh, that would mean that I would need to take sine of pi over 6 instead of 30 because I'm in radians. So I just want, want you guys to see what that would look like. So if I did sine, and then you always push the pi button over 6. So that's sine of pi over 6, which is 30 degrees, but I'm doing it in radians because that's what my calculator is in. And see how it equals one half, just like it does over here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this out. If you guys want to try filling this out on your own, either with a calculator or using the unit circle for extra practice, that'd be great. But I'm going to come back with this all filled out. Um, again, we just did sine of pi over six, which is a half. So you're just taking sine and plugging in either x value. Okay. Okay, so you f if you filled this out, here are um, all the numbers. If you correctly punch those in or use your unit circle, I just did the unit circle, so that's why you see my infractions. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and plot these. So again, this is your X and this is your Y on the graph. Um, we're gonna use the X value columns for the radians because that's what our X axis is measured in, and then our Y axis is measured just by single units. So zero comma zero is our first point. Pi over six comma a half. So I know that you don't see pi over six on here. So I'm just gonna skip it just for now. Let's do pi over two comma one. So here's pi over two and then up one. So if you think about it, how many boxes is pi over two? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So halfway would be three boxes. And what is half of pi over two? Or what is half of 90 degrees? 45 degrees. So this would be pi over four, right? So if we're trying to find where pi over six is, which is 30 degrees, well, 90 divided by three is 30, right? So same thing here, pi over two divided by three is pi over six. I went over this in my unit circle video, if you guys want to go back at that one. So if pi over two is six boxes, and to get to pi over six, I divide this by three, 
then I'm going to divide six boxes by three, and that's how many boxes will be equivalent to pi over six. So what is six over three? Two. So that means that pi over six is two boxes. Okay. So at pi over six, I'm going to go up one half. <laughs> so then I have five pi over six. So if this is one pi over six for two boxes, then two more boxes would be two pi over six or pi over three or 60 degrees. Two more boxes would be three pi over six, which is pi over two. Two more boxes would be four pi over six. So two more boxes would be five pi over six. So that's where five pi over six is and it's also at a half and then pi is at zero. So seven pi over six. So this was five pi over six, six pi over six, seven pi over six. And that's at negative a half, which is here. Three pi over two is here, that's at negative one. 11 pi over six, so this is seven pi over six, eight pi over six, nine pi over six, 10 pi over six, 11 pi over six is right here, and that's at negative a half, and two pi is at zero. So if I connect those, here is what your sine wave looks like. We call it a parent, kind of like um, the parent of any quadratic is just x squared. And then we can uh, move it up and down by adding something, right? We can move it left and right by adding or subtracting something here. So we always start from the parent graph, which is just sine of x. So now we're gonna see what happens when we slightly change the equation. For example, we are gonna compare sine of x, which is what we just did above, and then what happens if we take that thing and add one to it? What happens if we take sine of x and multiply it by two? And then what happens if we take just the x value, multiply it by two, and then take sine of that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these all out again because I'm literally just copying, pasting what we did up here, okay? So this is the same because it's just sine of x of the same radians. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and fill that out. Okay, so I went ahead and filled out. I also went ahead and graphed it. So now we're going to see what happens to the parent sine graph if we take this exact thing and just add one to it. So this is pretty easy with it being in a column since I already have sine of x filled out. I'm just going to take that sine of x, which is all of these, and add one to it. Simple as that. So if we do zero plus one, that's just one. If we do one half plus one, that's one and a half. If I do one plus one, I get two. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish filling this out. Okay, so here's my graph filled out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and graph it. So at zero, we're at one instead of zero, zero, so it's zero, one. Then at pi over six, I'm at one and a half. At 90, I'm at two. So can you guys already see a pattern compared to the parent, compared to what we have now? What kind of happened to this graph? It literally is the parent shifted up by one, right? It's exactly the same thing as if we were to see the parent quadratic plus one. It's just a parabola shifted up one. So it's the same thing here. So I'm just gonna take all of these points and shift them up one. And then we're going to connect. And there we go. So we have our parent shifted up one unit. So that's what this looks like. So now let's see what would this look like if I took my green column sine of x, which is here. So what if I take sine of x and I times it by two? So zero times two, that's still zero. What about a half times two? Well, if you think about, you know, a fraction times two, but two's cancels, so that just equals one, right? What's one times two? That's two, okay? So I'm gonna finish this column, multiply all of these greens by two, and that will help finish the column as well. 
So here's my column. So let's go ahead and graph this and see how this, by taking the parent and multiplying it by two, how does it change my graph? So again, look at the parent, and then let's go ahead and plot these and see what it looks like. So it's zero, zero, still there. Pi over six and one, okay. And pi over two and two, okay. Five pi over six and one. And then pi comma zero. And then seven pi over six and negative one. Three pi over two and negative two. Eleven pi over six. And negative one. And then two pi and zero. So here's what, if we multiply the parent by two, that's what that graph looks like. So can you guys tell like how, what's the difference between the green parent and the kind of yellow gold color? You guys notice they still go through the same X axis points, right? And then at these points, instead of being up one, we went up two. And at three pi over two, instead of going down one, we went down two. So basically what it did by multiplying the whole sign, the whole parent by two, it basically took the width of like, I call it like a peak. So if this is a mountain, it's the peak of the mountain. So the peak went from one unit to two units. And then same with the valley dipping below, it went from one units to two units. So the peaks and the valleys kind of doubled in size, right? Yeah. Okay, so this one's a little bit different because we actually can't take our parent because it's actually the X value that was multiplied by two. And then we took the sign of that, all right? So let's see what that looks like. So if our X value is zero, we plug in zero here. Well, two times zero is just zero anyway. So the sine of two times zero is the same as sine of zero, which was just zero. Okay. <clears throat> so now you guys can either calculate this and use the unit circle or just use your calculator. Um, I'm going to do radians. So I'm just going to make sure that my graph is in radians or my calculator is in radians. So we're going to take pi over six and plug that into here. Okay. So we're going to do sine <coughs> of two times pi over six, which is actually pi over three, right? And that's 0.866. If you guys calculated this um, using your unit circle, you would have gotten this guy, root three over two, okay? So that's what root 3 over 2 is as a um, decimal. Okay. <clears throat> so I am going to go ahead and calculate the rest of these, and then I will be right back. Okay, so here it is all calculator. Let's go ahead and graph. So we are at zero comma zero. So we're gonna compare it to this green line again. So how does multiplying x by two compare to the parent graph, all right? So now pi over six and 0.87. So almost one, just below one. So pi over six and just below one. Pi over two and zero. 5 pi over 6 and negative almost 1 pi and 0. 7 pi over 6 almost to 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish graphing this. Okay, so if you guys try and compare the green to the pink, 
You guys see how the green starts at zero, zero. It goes up to its peak, comes back through the x-axis, goes down to its valley, and comes back to the x-axis. So it's one wave, right? Well, look at the pink one. We go up to its peak, come through the x-axis, down to its valley, come through the x-axis, and then we get one more wave in. So what happened to the green? The green only has one up and one down. The pink has two ups and two downs. <clears throat> what this is doing is it's taking this green one and smushing it. Um, think about it as um, kind of like a slinky, like when you stretch it out and it's very like expanded and flat versus when you scrunch it together and it gets more elevated and closer together. So that's what we did. So by multiplying this x value by two, it squished the one single wave, okay? So that's what a sine graph looks like, and that's how these different values affect our sine wave. You guys are always welcome to make a table to create a graph for a sine function, but I wanna show you how to do it um, in a little bit of a quicker way, okay? So let's go ahead and turn the page. We're gonna point out some features. Um, we'll kind of bring this together, all right? So we have our sign, and then we have these three different values. So just like on the previous page, we had a value, like this A value was like this one, multiplying it by two. This B value was like this one, multiplying the X by two. And this C value was like adding one. So that's putting it all together. And sometimes you will see it affected in all three ways. So you can see it affected from the parent in one to three ways for now. <laughs> okay, so this guy, this A in front, that is called an amplitude. And the amplitude, again, to remind you from here, it was like this yellow one. So the amplitude took our peak from one unit to two units, right? From one unit to two units. So the amplitude is basically the height of the wave. So how high or low does it go, okay? So it's the height of the wave, the peaks and the valleys. Okay. Next up is this B value. Okay, so this B value will tell us um, the size of it's what we call a period. So one full period for the parent graph, as you guys can see here, is two pi. So if we look back at our green graph, which was the parent, right? If you guys look back at the green graph, a full period of a sine wave. Sine waves go on forever. They're never ending, just like lines. But to look at, focus on only one full sine period that goes from here, it goes up, crosses back through here, and then goes down. So that's one full sine wave, and we call that a period. So that's one full period, and as you guys can see, the parent goes from zero to two pi, right? So that's a full period. Over here, by multiplying the x value by two, how big was the period? The pink graph, it went up and then down and then stopped at pi instead of two pi, so it shrunk, right? So the period, because we multiplied it by two, it cut our period in half. So the parent period is two pi, so if we cut that in half, it's now at pi, okay? So this determines the size of the period. So to find out how large a period is, you take two pi, which is the parent, and you divide it by b, which this is b. So over here, because our b was two, if we do a period equals two pi divided by b, Well, if b is two, what's two pi divided by two? It's only pi. And that's why the size of 
this graph stopped at pi. So the period went up and then down and stopped at pi instead of stopping at 2 pi. Okay, so that B value determines the period of our graph. Okay, so again, a period size equals 2 pi, which is the parent, divided by whatever that B value is. And the last way that our graph can be affected is by adding or subtracting a number to it. And that is called our midline. It literally is like it sounds, it's the middle line, okay? So it's basically the line that cuts your wave in half horizontally. So the midline represents the vertical shift, okay? So back to this one, do you guys see how this plus one here didn't it literally move our green graph? Remember that was the first one we did? This green graph compared to the purple one, it's literally the same thing, just shifted up one. The exact same graph, just a translation of up one. Okay, so that's called the midline because it literally takes this graph and that line, which was one, cuts our wave in half in the middle horizontally. Okay, so those are all your key characteristics of a sine wave. So let's practice one, and then I'll have you guys do the next one on your own, all right? So let's do this one. Everyone will graph differently, um, so I'm just going to show you guys the process of how I like to graph. I like to first identify my midline, which as a reminder, it's the thing being added or subtracted to or from the sine. So if we look here, here's our sine, and this negative two right here is being added to the sine. So that is your midline. All right, so I'm gonna draw a horizontal line just to guide me at negative two. So here's negative two. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a horizontal line because I know that that is my new midline. This is the new line that's gonna cut my graph through horizontally. This is basically my new x-axis. My x-axis shifted down two units, right? It's a vertical shift. So I'm gonna pretend like this purple line is my new x-axis, all right? Next up, let's take a look at the number in front, which is this a value, and that's your amplitude. So what is my amplitude? It's three, right? So that three is my amplitude. And to remind you, that is the height of the waves. How high does the peak and the valley go? Okay, we're gonna come back to that in a second. I'm gonna jump ahead to the B value, which is how we determine the size of the period, right? So in this problem, do I have a number between the sine and the X? Nope, it's an invisible one. So for my period, if it's two pi over b, in this case, it's just two pi over one, which is two pi. So that means my period length is gonna be just like the parent. So I kinda start here first. So I know that my graph for sine, it will always start on the y-axis and the midline at that kind of origin. So that's my starting point at the new zero, zero, because I shifted down two, right? My period is going to end at however big it is, at two pi, and on the midline. So here's two pi, so my period's gonna end at two pi and on the midline, so it'll end right there, okay? So here's my start, here's my finish. So then if you guys look at the parent graph, here's the start, here's the finish, exactly what I have. So then instead of like making a t-shirt and figuring out all these points, which you can do, but you don't have to, you're gonna count exactly halfway, which in this situation is at pi, right? And you'll notice that that point is on the midline as well. So for signs, you'll always have three points on the midline, the start, the finish, and the halfway. So here's my start at the um, 
the new origin, so the y-axis and the midline. Here's my finish at 2 pi in the midline because that's how large my period is because b was 1. So now I'm going to take my two fingers and count exactly halfway, which is at pi. So there's going to be a point on the midline at pi. So I already have three points. I need a total of five for a sine graph, okay? So it's super easy. Instead of taking these two outsides and counting halfway, I'm now going to find my quarter points. So I'm going to take these two and count halfway. So that's, as you can see, at pi over 2. I'm going to do a little mark. And I'm going to take these two and count halfway. So as you guys can see, I have split this up into quarters, right? So this is where you draw the peaks and the valleys of your wave. And this is also where the amplitude comes in. So do you guys see how my amplitude is 3? So what I do is I take that halfway point, and from the midline, I'm going to draw my peak, which is up the amplitude, which is 3. So I'm going to go up 3 units, which as you guys can see, units are counted by 2 boxes. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and plot a point. So that's my peak. So this is the start of my sine wave. It looks like that. So then I'm going to take this other quarter point, And this is going to be my valley. So instead of going up three, I'm actually going to go down three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to connect that all the way. And that is one full sine wave, one full period. All I need to see is five points per period. Okay, so it goes up and then down. So five points per period. And then we can actually continue drawing this wave because it does never end and we're going to do it over here. So this is now my finish. So my start is reverse 2 pi. So there's my start and finish, the same size as this. I'm going to count halfway, plot a point, count halfway again to the quarter, halfway to the quarter, and at the halfway I'm going to go up 3. And at this quarter, I'm going to go down three. And then I'm going to connect all five points. And look at that. There's my sine wave. One, two. So I can see two periods on this guy. And that's how you draw a sine wave um, using shorthand. You can still create a t-chart if you want to, but you don't have to. All right. If you don't mind and can, I want you guys to pause the video and I want you to try and do number four. Follow the exact same steps um, and then you can come back and we can walk through it. So try and pause and then we'll go through it. Okay, so let's see how you did. I'm going to walk through it fairly quickly. So here's my midline plus one and a half. So I like to draw a horizontal line at my midline because it's my new x-axis. I use it as a guidance. So there's my midline. My amplitude is the number in front of sine. There is no number in front of sine. There's an invisible one. It's always one times. So that's my amplitude. So that's how high my peaks and valleys are going to be. So I'll come back to that. And this four helps me find my period. So the period is two pi over b. In this case, b is four. So two pi over four, and then reduce two over four, so that's pi over two. So the size of my period went from two pi, this big, to pi over two. So it's gonna be tiny, right? I'm gonna see a full up and down wave in this much space, okay? So I always start on the y-axis and my midline right there, and then my finishing point is how big the period is, pi over 2 and midline. So that's how small the period is. Then we do the halfway method, right? Same, same stuff. So these two go exactly halfway, plot a point. Then you're going to go halfway and mark. So it's going to be in between. That's okay. Halfway and mark. 
and then at this halfway, I'm gonna go up whatever the amplitude is, which in this case is one. So at this halfway, I'm gonna go up one unit, which in this case is two boxes, and then here I'm gonna go down one unit. Connect all five points, boom. There is one period for this sine wave. Let's just do one more just to see that flow, okay? So start, my finish is this big, so it's gonna end at pi. And you go halfway and plot, halfway up one, halfway down one, and connect. There's two periods, so it's much smaller, right? Awesome, you're getting the hang of it. So that is a sine wave, and that's how you graph it shorthand. Pretty cool. If you feel like you want some more practice, um, I'm not gonna walk through, I'm just gonna put up the answers. So if you wanna go ahead and do number five right now, you are more than welcome to. Just pause the video right now because I'm gonna pop back up with that answer. Okay, so here is this answer. This one's a bit crazy because your period is four pi. So again, it will still always start here. So this is my start and then it goes up, crosses through the halfway point, which was two pi because it's gonna end at four pi. So to kind of picture this, is a little bit complicated at first, but it's nice to try and extend this. So if I extend this, okay, so that's two pi, so that's about another two pi, yeah. So we'll call that four pi, and that's three pi, okay? So to draw this, I always start at the y-axis and the midline, so there's my starting point, and then I finish at my period, which is four pi, right? Which is here. So then we take those two points and we count halfway, which is why you see a point on the midline and two pi. Then we mark our quarter points. Here's one at pi, and then our other quarter point at three pi. So then I go up the amplitude, which was three, and then from here, I go down three. So there's your full four pi period, but because the graph that I gave you stops at two pi, you can't see this other half. So that's why you kind of see this guy instead. And then if I extend it to this side, it expands. So it's a little bit trippy, huh? Okay. So now let's see if you can try it again. So go ahead and try this one for me. So if you wanna pause the video and go ahead and attempt this, I'll come back up with the key. Just make sure you pause it if you wanna try it first right now. Here comes the key. If you needed a quick hint, I don't know if you noticed that this is subtracting the sign instead of adding it like we always do. So what this means is that your amplitude is a negative instead of a positive. If you have any ideas what that might look like, so instead of your point starting here, which it still will, it'll still, it sign always starts on the Y axis and the midline. So it starts here, but instead of going up and then down, because it's a negative amplitude, it actually um, is a reflection and it goes down and then up. So go ahead and try it now. So go ahead and pause again if that was a helpful hint and try it again. All right, so here is one period of this graph um, so our midline was a positive too, because there's a positive here, but that negative is why it went down and then up. Um, and it only went down one and up one as its peaks because of the amplitude, but it's squished because the period, um, the B value is four. So there's one. And then if you did another one, it would look like that. And you can keep going too. Usually about two, two to three is what we want to see. Okay. All right, you guys ready to move on to cosine? Yeah. So let's move on to cosine. Um, these were just warm ups, more signs. Let's move on to cosine. So we're going to do something very similar like we did with sine. 
and we are going to see what the graph looks like. So again, we can use um, either our unit circle or we can use a um, calculator. <clears throat> so to remind you, cosine is the x value of the coordinate point on the unit circle. So if I go to zero and I look at the x value, so here's zero pi, my x value is one. So that means if I take cosine of zero, which I'll do anyway, I should get one. There it is. Okay, so then at pi over six, which is here, my x value is root three over two. which is about 0.86, okay? So we have pi over four, which is this 45 degrees, and my x value is root two over two. And root two over two is about 0.7, okay? Pi over three is 60 degrees, so at 60 my x value is a half. And then pi over two is 90 degrees. That x value is zero. At pi, my x value is negative one. At three pi over two, my x value is zero. And at two pi, my x value is back to one. So let's go ahead and see what this graph looks like for cosine. So zero comma one. Pi over six, again, from the sine graph, it was only two boxes, which is 0.86, almost to one. Pi over four is exactly half of pi over two, so halfway would be three boxes. So at three boxes, I go up 0.7, right about there. Pi over three is four boxes, right there, so I go up a half. Pi over two is zero. Pi is negative one, three pi over two is zero, and two pi is one. So that's what cosine looks like. So let's go ahead and connect all the dots. So it kind of looks like a smile, I usually say, or like a U kind of. So I'm gonna draw in the differences between um, sine and cosine. So sine will be in the kind of gold color. So sine always starts on the origin, right? And then it ends at two pi. So as you guys can see, cosine also ended at two pi, but instead of starting on the midline, it started a unit above the midline, right? So then sine starts on the midline and ends on the midline, and then you count halfway and it's on the midline again. So as you guys can see, the two ends of sine are up one and the middle sine is down one. So then we count our quarter points, right? Which is halfway between those. And for cosine, those are on the midline, but for sine, it's one unit above and one unit below. So here is sine versus cosine. I kind of continue this, this cosine. It's gonna go back down, dip below, and then come back up. Just like over here, it's gonna come down, dip below. So you guys see like cosine is actually sine. It has the exact same wave. So cosine is literally sine, but shifted. Okay, so like for example, this point from sine moved over um, or we can say it moved over here or it moved over here. So if it moved backwards, it goes up and then down and there's your sine graph. If it moved to here, it goes up and then down and there's your sine graph. So cosine is literally just sine. It just starts instead of on the origin on the y-axis in the midline, it starts on the y-axis and up one unit, okay? So the way that we kind of quick can graph cosine units without using a table, I'll kind of do it like right here for you. 
So here's like the shorthand for cosine. Um, and then we actually have all the same too. So for cosine, this is still the amplitude, which still represents the peak in the valley. This is still the midline, which still represents the vertical shift. And this is still helping you find your period, which is two pi over B, okay? So for a cosine graph, it's one cosine one X plus zero. So for all, this is for parents. So for the parent, the midline is zero, right? Here she marked mine. And pi over two, pi equals two, two pi. So my midline is still zero, my amplitude is one, and my period due to two pi over b and b is one is two pi. Okay, so I always start on the y-axis, but instead of at the origin, like starting on the midline, like sine, I go up however big the amplitude is. So the amplitude is only one unit, so I'm gonna go up one unit. And then cosine will end where the period is, which is two pi, and it's also gonna end one amplitude above. Then you do the halfway method, so count halfway, which is at pi, and you're gonna go one below, or the amplitude below. Then you count halfway and halfway, so you find the two quarter points, which are here and here, and those are points on the midline. So cosine also has five points, just like sine. Sine has three points on the midline, whereas cosine only has two points on the midline, and cosine will always make you smile. So let's do some practice and we're done. Okay, so let's try this one. We'll do this one together and then you guys will try the next one on your own. So here's my midline, that one. So I am gonna draw a dash line at one, because that's my new x-axis, the shifted up one from the parent. So that's my midline. My amplitude is two, so that means that my peaks and valleys are gonna be two units up from the midline and two units down from the midline. And then because my B value is one, that means that my period is two pi over B, which is one. So my period is just two pi. It's a little brighter. Okay. There we go. So for cosine, that's another thing too. We'll be mixing in sines and cosines. So you gotta make sure to recognize that this is sine or cosine. So cosine starts above the midline. So here's my midline on the y-axis. I'm going to start there. And how far am I going to go up? The amplitude. So up two units. My period is two pi. So I'm going to go to two pi in the midline and also go up two units. So those are the peaks of my smile. Then I'm going to count halfway, which is at pi. And from the midline, I'm going to go down um, my amplitude, which is two units. So down one, two units. So that's the bottom of my smile, like the pit of your bottom lip. Then I'm gonna find my two quarter points. So between these two points, go halfway, which is at pi over two, and then here halfway, three pi over two, and those points are on the midline. Connect those five points and you're done. You have a smile. And there's cosine. I'm gonna do it again over here just so you guys can see how it uh, continues. So again, here's my start or end. So it's gonna go to negative two pi and up two. My halfway point at pi goes down two. And then my two quarter points are on the midline. And then I connect. And there's my second smile. So there's my cosine wave. 
Cool. Let's go to the next one. And I want you guys to pause and you try this one. If you will notice, do you see how this cosine is negative? So it's gonna be very similar to when sine was negative. So instead of your graph starting above the midline and smiling, where do you think the negative is gonna start? Below. So instead of going up the amplitude, you're gonna go down the amplitude and it's gonna be a frown. So go ahead and pause the video right now and I'll come back with the, um, with the uh, answer. All right, so I am back with the key. So here is our midline at positive three. You can see that it's a frown instead of a smile because it's negative. And then there's an invisible one there. So that's why it's only one unit away from the midline for the peak in the valley. And then the period itself got smaller because of this too. So the period is only pi. So if we do another period really quickly, That is a horrible period. <laughs> this one's so pretty and this one's not. But um, that is two together. Um, you know, I mean, you can keep going and do more. But usually we'll just require um, two from you guys. Nope, it goes down here. So there's three full periods of that one. Okay, I think I just have one more. Oh, there's actually a ton. Okay, well, um, if you want to do the rest on your own, you can just pause and I'll put up the key for you to check. You, that's completely optional though. Um, but I will still put up the key for the rest of these four. So if you want to do um, one at a time or all four and go, um, go ahead and do it. I'm gonna put up the key right now, here it comes. Okay, so I again just did one full period. Midline is down three. We only went up half, which is just one block. There's my smile and its size is pi. And you could have done um, more too. I just wanted you to see the one. So the next one, if you wanna try it, here comes number 10. So pause the video if you wanna do it on your own. Okay, raise your hand if I tricked you with this one because we switched back to sine instead of cosine. So that's what I mean, but you gotta be really careful um, about reading what type of graph I want from you. So if you did a cosine, just double check that your midline, your amplitude, and your period was correct. Um, but this was actually a sign. All right. All right, here comes the answer for number 11 if you wanna pause it and try that one. All right, so we went back to cosine and I only just did one period, um, but the amplitude was pretty big with a four. Um, and then my period size, so the full smile was pi. All right, here comes the last one. Back to sign so you don't get fooled. <laughs> here comes the answer. All right, so there is that answer. Um, because the sign had a negative in front of it, its amplitude dipped below first and then up instead of up and then down. Cool, so you have learned how to graph sine and cosine, It's awesome. Um, for your homework, that pen is dying. For your homework, it is going to be the RSG 6.5, which is on pages 13 through 15. And you are only going to do numbers one through eight, but you're gonna do all of the one through eight. So number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I, does, I do think it goes like nine, 10, maybe to 12, but you don't need to do those. So you only need to do one through eight. All right, have a good day, guys.